So here we've got Heyer's HDC 1804 TW portable dishwasher. And when you look at it, you may not really think that this is a portable unit. It's really not that portable as you think. It's meant to just be able to move around when you need it to. This is genuinely designed to sit on top of your counter and quickly connect or disconnect to your kitchen faucet and then plug into an outlet and that's how it would work. There's no caster wheels or anything like that that you may have seen on the Heyer HLP21N portable washer that I've got, which I'm actually gonna do a second video on with clothes in it and a couple of other things since there's been a lot of requests for that. Anyway, we're focusing on this right now. So we're gonna start with the front here. We've got your main panel where the dishes are put in and washed. Here's your door open switch. Right there. Now you've got your three selectable cycles on this unit. You have your heavy for pots and pans, normal for typical dishware, and then you've got a gentle cycle for things like glassware or other delicate items. Really all it does is change uh, the number of rinse cycles, uh, how long the duration of the uh, first wash cycle is, and a couple of other things like that. These are status indicators for which cycle it's doing. Those are also the indicators to tell you if there's an error. It'll flash one of these indicators to let you know which one. Along with your power LED. That's where your selector is. You've got your power switch at the bottom. And speaking of the hose for the kitchen faucet, this is your quick disconnect hose. It connects up right here with this spring-loaded action. This is a pressure release button so you can relieve the pressure before you disconnect this so it doesn't splatter water all over you and then the drain just drains right out the bottom so the water goes in at the top the drain goes out the bottom this is your connection to the water inlet and that's your connection for the drain on the back side move that out of the way look at the side give you an idea of the relative size Now you got a typical dish rack, you say you can put four dishes in here, a couple of larger ones, maybe some pots and a few other things in the front, depending on how you want to lay it out. And this is supposed to put mugs, but I found that uh, there isn't a whole lot of room in height to put mugs here, but you can maybe put other things. And then you've got a place to put items like silverware in here as well. Move this out of the way. Down below here, look at the inside of the door. This is where your detergent is put. You also have a spot where you can put a rinse aid right down in there and it'll be injected in there during the rinse cycle. Put that back, back in there. We'll zoom in just a little bit. Inside there is where you'll find the spray arm. And down here is your filter where the water is recycled during the wash cycle. And that's where the sump will be and the heating element is right down in there. That will heat up the water to get it to the right temperature of 140 degrees. Back back. Move back out here. Get this all back together. A couple of other things here. It also comes with these two items. This is your measuring scoop for if you're using the powdered dishwashing detergent and then you've got a measure, other measuring cup here if you're using liquid dishwashing detergent. And from what I've read from people and what I've also been using, the liquid dishwashing detergent is the best to use in here because the powdered stuff can get into the seals here and possibly cause it to leak and a couple of other issues. So liquid dishwashing detergent is what I've been using and it's been working fine with no problems. Just make sure that you're using dishwashing detergent, not dish soap. Unless you want to clean up all the bubbles that come out of it, you don't use this. And on the back here is where we'll find the water inlet and that drain line and your AC cord goes into the back. Very simple to attach these. 
let's take a water inlet put it on there and start threading it now this is for portability but the hair does have an option that you can get separately if you want to kind of use this as a semi-permanent installation where you can buy a uh, Y adapter to hook this up into a water line. It does come with a, a separate drain hose that you can put to hook up to something like a garbage disposer or T adapter into your drain on your sink if you want to kind of use this in a somewhat permanent installation but you'll have to get the water in that hose separately for that if you want to do it that way now with the faucet adapters you can use them on either inside threaded faucets like this one where the thread is inside or you can use it on outside threaded faucets like this one here, where you can see the inside thread here for that other faucet. And then we got the lines all connected and everything. Now let's move it over and get it all hooked up and do some washing. in that drain. It's definitely totally empty right now. Good lord, I almost forgot about one. And you can stop it too.
let that run for a while. We'll come back when we can get it to the rinse cycle. So here we are, and we're still in the wash cycle of it right now. Again, like I said earlier, this is in the heavy mode right now, so this is taking a good while before it gets to the, the rinse part. But I figure I should mention in the meantime, I'm going to have a second video on this where I'm going to remove the cover here and show the inside components of what you know you can replace and work on if you ever need to fix a, a particular problem with it because there is some parts on it that are actually user replaceable if you know where to look for them and then I'll also demonstrate the diagnostic mode on here because it does have a way to run a series of diagnostics to check the water fill, the heating element, the drain pump, and a couple of other things. So I'll demonstrate all that stuff in a separate video. I'll just mention that in the meantime here. And that was that was interesting. Spaghetti sauce all over it, and it's going to clean now. That's it. And again, that was the Hayer HDC 1804 TW. Again, there'll be a second video later on showing the diagnostic mode, and also we'll take this cover off 
and look inside of it but that's pretty much it for now and for those that are curious how long the, this heavy cycle took to complete it took four hours from start to finish that gives you an idea how long it takes on the heavy cycle <laughs>